it's, it's not spread up. In Japan, breeding a top view Ranchu is a serious hobby. Ranchus can only be bred once a year, between March and May. The rest of the year, the fish undergoes grooming. Yes, you heard it right, grooming. After about six months, they make their grand entrance. This is at the All Japan Ranchu Competition held in November, which, you got it again, it is a public holiday. Top View Ranchus to the Japanese embodies the strength, grace, and dignity of a champion sumo wrestler. So Ranchu rankings follow sumo rankings. The champion fish is conferred the title East Ozeki. A third time champion is given the highest title, a Yokozuna. Okay, what we look for, there are five points that we look for in the Ranchu. First thing is the swimming. The fish must be able to swim elegantly and powerfully. And swimming depends on the, the age of the fish. For a tosai, that is one year, they must swim in, the, in a very fast way. The second thing we look for is the tail. It must have a big, nice, beautiful tail and must be balanced, which is very important. And third point that we look for is actually the back. The back of the fish or the body of the fish. It should not be too fat, it must be thick and it must be parallel all the way to the tail of of the fish. And the first point that we are looking for is the head. It has to be long and the eye has to be parallel at the side of the head. So it is balanced. It should not be at the top or near to the front. And the last point that we look for is actually the color of the fish. It can be orange, can be very white or it can be red. It must be natural color and rich in color. Hobbyists here try to emulate the Japanese art of caring for their top view ranchu, down to using these white enamel basins to appreciate the fish during competitions. And like the clubs in Japan, the Ozeki Club here keeps its membership small, so as to maintain the golden standards of grooming a show-grade ranchu. The club provides me an opportunity to benchmark some of the other fishes that other members are keeping, so we have uh, you know, in-house competitions where we see how the fishes grow and, and then we learn from another. Mr. Chang is an avid hobbyist of the Top View or Japanese Ranchu. It's a hobby he shares with his wife who doesn't mind him spending time with these beauties. After all, some are champions or ozekis. This little fella is uh, from a breeder who lives about two hours north of Tokyo in a, in a place called Toshigi Prefecture and his name is Akira Sakia. This is a special. Um, I kept this fish more for sentimental reasons than anything else. Uh, the reason is this particular fish is called Shindo and Shindo uh, was a very famous breeder until he passed away about 32 years ago. So what you see here is one of the last of the Shindo because the line of this fish does not exist anymore. The good breeds, the pure line, they have a certain feature about them. Like Shindo, if you notice the head, it's kind of like very lumpy and bulky. It doesn't look very nice, but it has a very unique feature. Studying to better the Japanese method of Ronshu raising is this young hobbyist, Alex. The Japanese rely on nature and the elements outdoors to raise top quality ranchus. And one essence of success is said to be green pond water. So green, it should be like Japanese green tea, they say. The club uh, gave me an idea of uh, how to go into this green water by looking in the algae itself. Which type of algae produce, uh, is the best for the goldfish? And which type of green? How do we maintain that type of green? My project is hope to help the, uh, all those fish hobby, fish enthusiasts. They, they how to, how, help them how to uh, get a way of maintaining their fish to be healthy and to be in their best shape, the best color. This golden pedigree has turned many a hobbyist into a serious fanatic, addicted to the quest for perfection. There's no things perfect. Uh, including fish. So the only thing that maybe that I can conceptualize a perfect fish will be in my drawings. I learned how to uh, appreciate goldfish in different angles 
and different varieties each have their own beauties. Do you know which fish are the most valuable? Why the goldfish, of course. <laughs> Hi! Today I'm going to show you how to do your very own DIY on. Well, let me introduce Philip, the general manager of the Nature Company. Great. And he's going to show us how to build the Nature Pond. Great. Come, shall, we, uh, shall I show it to you? Philip, tell me, what are some of the things that, that uh, people should know when they want to set up their very own garden pond? I think to start off, people must have an idea of uh, what they want. How big is the space available? Mm -hmm. uh, where do they want to put the pond? And uh, from there, with an uh, idea of what size, they have available, then we can start off with looking at the fiberglass tank because that will determine the size of the pond they, they can put in the house. Okay, Philip, uh, tell me, are these all the ponds or containers here? What are these here? These are essentially fiberglass tanks. These are the starting point of a pond. That means uh, when you uh, want to make a pond, you start with a fiberglass tank. This is the starting point. This, this will hold the water. So using the fiberglass tanks, we are able to use it as a, as a base for making a pond. And then, uh, is it easy to set up this system in the beginning? Uh, yes, uh, we try to employ a concept uh, like uh, some uh, well-known furniture companies where they introduce uh, knock-down furniture. So our concept is also very simple. We try to make things as simple as possible. And uh, it's like, what we say, you know, uh, Lego for adults. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next step after selecting the tank will be to choose the stones. Ah. Okay, you see that over here we have granite. These are granite blocks from mm -hmm. China. And even for granite, we, we have it in three colours. So it's light grey, mm -hmm. and we have it in uh, rustic yellow, mm -hmm. and dark grey. And besides granite, you also have uh, other kinds of stone, like lava stone. These are black stones, uh -huh. we have it in sandstone. Uh -huh. now, the purpose of having all these stones is to enable customers to find stones that can suit their home decor. After you have laid the fiberglass tank on where you have determined uh -huh. as the right location for your home or garden, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then, we, then we come to the next step which is to lay the stone blocks around the fiberglass tank. Now we have finished the First and second layer, we come to the final layer. Now, the final layer, we have a special profile stone that you conceal the fiberglass tank. If you are concerned that if you don't want anyone to move these stones, then you can either use cement or what we do is many cases, we just use silicone. Okay, so this completes the pond. We have finished the pond. Right? Yep. Okay, so the next thing that we can do is to install the electrical and mechanical part. We're going to fix the filter. Its purpose is to keep the water clean mm -hmm. and also to be linked to a water spout. So David, all these filter media helps to keep the water clean? Yes, they are. And it helps to maintain the, uh, the, the cleanliness of the water through this uh, mat followed by the bio ball and then followed by the show light. And the last comp compartment, the water is clean and it will be sucked out by this pump. We will now close the cover on the filter. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I place the filter inside the pond. This is the icing on the cake. <laughs> but Philip, with the power supply running on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, is that going to be very expensive? Actually, the motor which drives the filter and the pump consumes very little electricity. Mm. Uh, the pump in this case uh, consumes about 20 watts. So if, you don't, if you look at a normal electric bulb, it's about 60 to 100 watts. Mm -hmm. So even a bulb consumes 3 times to 5 times more power than this little bulb. So 
the running cost of this system is actually very low. This filter system is intended to run 24 hours a day. You got to keep it running 24 hours a day to keep the water clean. So actually, these are designed to run continuously. And uh, because the pumps are immersed in the water, it doesn't overheat. So actually, it's quite safe to put it in the water. Yeah, so gentlemen, what you have seen here is a pond which uh, we have put together in a DIY, DIY manner for 10 minutes. So this is a 10 minute DIY nature pond. Wow. What do you think of it? <laughs> Why wait? Fantastic. Go for it. I will. <laughs>